Why play Nico support? Well, she deals tons of damage, her poke is brilliant, she is a team fighting beast, and she can disguise herself as basically anything. However, she is incredibly squishy for a champion that wants to go in, and she is damage reliant so can struggle from behind. Nico's passive is her ability to disguise herself. At any point, she can take on the appearance of an allied champion. In addition, standing by non-epic monsters, minions, traps, wards, pets, and jungle plants puts them in her bag. She can only have one thing in her bag at a time, but at any point she can choose to turn Turn herself into that. Nico's Q throws a circle on the floor which deals damage to enemies hit. If it hits an enemy champion or kills an enemy, it will explode again up to twice more for half the damage. Nico's W has a passive where every third attack deals bonus damage and grants her bonus movement speed. The active creates a clone and turns them both invisible for half a second while she gains bonus movement speed. The clone will last for three seconds and copies the animations of her Q and her E. This ability can be recast to move the clone. Nico's E is a straight line skill shot which deals damage to and roots enemies hit. If it travels through at least one enemy, the skill shot grows in size and the root duration is increased. Nico's ultimate creates a circle around her. If she's disguised or uses her W, she can hide to the start of the animation. After a short time, she knocks up enemies hit, deals damage to them and stuns them. For combos, land E through a minion into your Q. Spam away with attacks using your W for confusion and a speed up. And your all in is to use W to hide the first part of your ultimate. From here, use your ultimate into your E and Q before spamming away with more attacks. When you have items, you'll often use Rocket Belt to get in range of your ultimate and Zonya's afterwards to keep yourself safe. For matchups, Nico is amazing into hook supports or champions that rely on one cooldown, easily using her clone to take that cooldown for her. And she can struggle into very long range supports who will simply outrange and bully her. For runes, take this. Comet makes your burst even better. For build order, start World Atlas and Pots into a Rocket Belt, Tier 2 Boots, and upgrade to a Zazax. After this, a Zonya's is a must pick up before finishing a build with any of these as needed. For skill order, start Q then E then W before maxing Q then E then W taking ult whenever you can. For some spells take flash and ignite. Starting the game, your main role is to poke your opponent and make the lane incredibly difficult for them, making it easier for your team. You are incredibly threatening the second you hit level 2, as landing an empowered E at this point in the game will more or less guarantee all three procs of your Q for massive damage along with Comet. Also, your Q and E not only work through minions, but they're empowered by hitting minions. This forces your opponent to play in a strange way where they have to be quite far away from any minion wave, so if they ever walk up to it, punish them. You're also amazing at ganking your own lane and other lanes. By changing into a ranged minion, you're constantly forcing your opponent to count the minions. And if they ever miss you, it's a free combo. Enter in the mid game, you want to take your tower as soon as possible. From here, look for fun plays where you can get picks. Hide as minions, wards, or even jungle monsters to surprise your opponent and set up plays. Entering late game team fights, you want to play as your teams engage, getting off a massive ultimate. Disguise yourself as someone or something else. Rocket belts towards their team. Ultimate as many as you can before dumping the rest of your damage on one of their carries. After this, Zonya's if needed to keep yourself alive while your team follows up. 